Coming at number 10, we have her rocky relationship with Lisa Marie Presley. While the world has begun reeling in the aftermath of Lisa Marie Presley's tragic passing, many have begun to ask questions about her family life. In particular, it seems like people are increasingly curious about what her relationship with Priscilla Presley was like. While the two were thick as thieves before Lisa's passing, the two faced their fair share of ups and downs. It's said that Lisa Marie had a very rocky relationship with Priscilla due to her troubles and breakdown of her relationship with Michael Lockwood. The pair was sadly only able to repair their relationship after Lisa Marie's son passed away on July 12, 2020. But before, it seems like Lisa Marie's estrangement to her mother would come when she decided to divorce Michael Lockwood and her mother Priscilla actually chose to stand by him even after Lisa Marie claimed to have found illegal videos and photos of on Michael Lockwood's computer. While sources say Priscilla had to be comforted by her friends as her relationship between her and Lisa fell apart, this is when she felt lost over what to do at the time. But she would have never had a rocky relationship with Lisa if she just chose to stand by her daughter like a mother should always do. Number nine, her love for Elvis Presley. When Elvis Presley broke up with his wife Priscilla Presley in 1973, the couple remained really close until his passing. And later, Priscilla Presley would admit that she never stopped loving him even after he passed away unexpectedly just years after their divorce. And even his passing made her realize that she didn't want to live in a world without him. It's even been said that after their divorce, the pair actually walked out of the courthouse holding hands. Priscilla and Elvis would split after his substance abuse and affairs got way too out of hand, but their relationship kept intact. And they still spoke to one another frequently. To this day, Priscilla's love for Elvis is so strong that she can't even be in the same room as Elvis. Elvis impersonators when they are dressed up as the star as it's too hard for her. Back in 2014, when Priscilla Presley was set to attend Elvis Festival in Collingwood, Ontario, she agreed to do the event, but there was one huge rule for the festival that they would have to follow in order to have her attend, and this rule would be that Elvis impersonators couldn't be in the same room as her. However, when one did come into the event not dressed up as Elvis, as he was following the rules, Priscilla would be left feeling very emotional as he reminded her of Elvis, and she would even praise the festival for keeping Elvis's story alive. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number 8, Her Life at 14 Elvis and Priscilla's relationship was much darker than what even some of the biggest fans may have realized. Even those who already casually knew that Priscilla was quite young when she met Elvis may still don't know what the pair's relationship was like when they began their courtship. Priscilla was only 14 years old and Elvis was 24, and the details of their courtship may not be front of mind. Written in Priscilla Presley's own words for people in 1985, the specific story on how the king of rock and roll met and wooed his only wife may be hard for some fans to stomach. Priscilla and Elvis met back in 1959 when her family settled in a small town in Germany, and Priscilla was invited to a party by a family friend. It would be at this party she would meet Elvis and tell him that she was in the ninth grade. It would be at this moment that he would tell her she was just a baby. However, a few nights later, he would tell Priscilla that he wanted to be alone with her and asked her to come to his bedroom. While the two would spend the night together, they would end up seeing each other for months and they would continue to spend every night together, which proved to be too much for the student as her grades would start to slip. While Priscilla claimed that they never made love, her parents became very confused and bewildered about her relationship with Elvis and it took a lot for them to prove that it was proper and platonic. At number 7, experimenting with substances. After Priscilla met Elvis, when he was stationed in Germany on military service, she described how they had a very passionate relationship, so when he was discharged and set to return home, Priscilla did everything she could to persuade her parents to let her go to America. Her parents would then only agree when she agreed that she would live in a separate property and go to school. While Priscilla did go to school, she spent all of her free time day and night at Graceland. In a powerful interview with Barbara Walters in 1985, Priscilla would recall the intense and strange world she lived in with Elvis as a young teenager. Priscilla would stay up late every night and every morning Priscilla would get up for high school and then when she arrived home in the afternoon she would crawl back in bed with Elvis. Eventually after Priscilla's grades started to slip, she had to start taking sleeping medication to help her sleep. Priscilla felt like she had to make things work with Elvis because she was scared that if she didn't do it, another 
another woman would, and she wanted to be the one. She would even bring up a horrifying moment when Elvis gave her two strong medications to help her sleep, and that even when she was unconscious, Elvis didn't call a doctor because he didn't realize that she's never taken them before and gave her too much of a strong dose. Even after she was passed out for two days, as Elvis's behavior became more extreme, the couple would spend days in bed. Number six, home wrecker. Since Elvis was 24 years old and a famous worldwide performer, it's probably not too much of a surprise that Elvis was in a relationship with someone else when he met Priscilla. Before there was Priscilla, Elvis was actually dating actress Anita Wood, who he began dating in 1957, and the relationship was actually pretty serious. When Anita did an interview with the Daily Express, she would say, he swore he loved me, how we would get married, how there was so no one else, how I need to stay true to him and remain and wait for him, how he was afraid I would not. Nita would also say that she wasn't allowed to visit Elvis, why he was in Germany, and that the two were still together when Elvis returned to the United States in 1960. By then, Anita already started to hear the rumors about Priscilla and that Elvis was constantly telling her that it was nothing to be worried about. Anita would then eventually confront Elvis about the nature of his relationship with Priscilla and the singer asked her to keep Priscilla a secret because he believed he would get in a lot of trouble over his relationship with the young girl. While Anita would go on to date Presley for two more years, he would have Priscilla flown out to the States and he would begin dating both women. When Anita found out that Elvis was having a hard time making up his mind about the two women, Anita would overhear the conversation Elvis was having with his father and she would make the decision to leave the star. Number five, Living Doll. When Elvis Presley started dating Priscilla Presley, when she was just 14 years old, as a relationship started to grow, the king of rock and roll would start to dictate how she had to dress and told her that she didn't need an education. While Priscilla did everything she could to be with Elvis, she felt like she was his living doll while she was living with him in Graceland, away from her family. While Priscilla went on to lose her identity throughout the relationship with Elvis, she would also lose her individuality. Later in life, Priscilla would call herself Elvis Elvis's doll, his own living doll to fashion as he pleased. In an interview with Express, she would also state that Elvis frowned upon chip nail polish and pattern dresses, and he insisted that Priscilla would look better with long hair and that she needed to apply more makeup around the eyes to make them stand out as her eyes were too plain naturally, and that he liked a lot of makeup as it defined her features. Elvis would also go on to teach her how to walk, how to dress, how to apply makeup, wear her hair, how to behave, and how to return his love in his way. Number four, strict mother. Before Lisa Marie Presley passed away, she would admit that as a parent, her father Elvis Presley was a lot of fun. However, she has also spoken out about the worries concerning her famous father. Mainly that as a child, she felt like she needed to protect him and keep him safe. Priscilla Presley previously has also admitted that when it came to parenting, Lisa Marie, she was often put in the role of being the one who had to set the rules. While Priscilla sat down with an interview with The Guardian, she would say, I was the disciplinarian. And there were times Lisa Lisa didn't like it, but you can't live life without boundaries. I was very subtle and very calm, and she knows this now. Priscilla would also add in the interview that Lisa Marie was only four years old when her parents divorced. So she would have to work hard to ensure that her daughter understood that everyone could still get along. Number three, the affair. It's clear that Elvis and Priscilla's marriage wasn't all glitter and gold. While it's said that Elvis had multiple affairs that put a major strain on his relationship with Priscilla, behind the scenes, Priscilla also had an affair when she was still married to Elvis. While the age difference and controlling nature of their relationship took a toll on Priscilla, ultimately she decided that she needed an outlet as there were times she didn't even feel like she was a person because Elvis was always the concerned person as he came first and no one cared about her, her feelings, or what she was going through. Ultimately, Priscilla eventually started to seek out the company of another man during her 10 year marriage. In the book Elvis and Me, Priscilla would allege that her ex-husband had affairs during their marriage. Despite that, Elvis reportedly became incredibly angry when he discovered that Priscilla had an affair of her own. She would also go on to say that she was dating fitness instructor Mike Stone when she was still married to Elvis and added that her husband had a big reaction when he found out. It would later be revealed that Elvis was so angry he even tried to get his entourage to hire a hitman to get Mike. 
Number two, stole custody of Lisa Marie Presley's kids. Priscilla Presley's daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, was a mom to four children, Benjamin, Riley, and twins, Finley and Harper. When Lisa Marie ended up locked in an incredibly difficult custody battle with her ex-husband, Michael Lockwood, for quite some time, it said that Priscilla even had custody of Lisa's twins, Finley and Harper, as the custody battle dragged on. In 2017, Priscilla would reveal on ABC News that the twins had been living with her for some time and she would go on to say it's still very family oriented environment for them. It's been over nine months. They're great. They're doing wonderful. They're living a great life. They see both parents and we'll see what happens. At the time, the California Department of Children and Family Services was involved in the care of the twins and the move came after Lisa Marie filed claims of sexual misconduct against Michael Lockwood. And coming in number one today, we have saved Elvis's fortune. Just after Elvis Presley unexpectedly passed away in 1977, his net worth was a surprising five million, which is much lower than most people would expect and much lower than what he earned in his lifetime. With his estate being left to his daughter, grandmother, and father after the passing of Elvis's father and grandmother, Lisa Marie Presley was left as the sole beneficiary of Elvis's estate. Priscilla then served as the executor of Elvis's estate until Lisa Marie's 25th birthday. During this time, she devised a plan to rebuild the late singer's fortune, giving her daughter an extremely comfortable lifestyle and future. While some pressed Priscilla to sell Graceland for liquidation purposes, she she opted to turn the home into a tourist attraction with the help of Jack Soden. She also worked to buy the surrounding properties around Graceland, making sure they became stores that sold Elvis's merchandise and eventually rebuilt Elvis's estate into a massive fortune. Coming in number 10, The Secret Gift. When Elvis Presley passed away on August 16, 1977, the world was in shock. Elvis' daughter Lisa was in the next room when her father passed away. Just being 9 years old at the time, the future singer was perhaps more overwhelmed than anyone else. Knowing that she couldn't just send her father off in a coffin without something special from her, she decided to place a special gift inside his coffin. While thousands of fans queued up to pay their final respects to Elvis, just before the doors opened to the venue, Priscilla and Lisa Marie would be escorted to where her father was laying. While the king was styled to look his best, looking upon her father for the final time, Lisa Marie would make one special request. Funeral director Robert Kendall recalled that Lisa asked him if he could give her gift to her father. Robert recalls that she held up this thin metal bracelet and that he agreed once her and Priscilla ensured it would not fall into the wrong hands. With thousands of fans outside, they feared someone would see the loose bangle on Elvis's wrist and take it as a souvenir. So Priscilla and Robert placed it on Elvis's wrist and tucked it underneath his shirt cuff to ensure no one would be able to take this precious gift given to him by Lisa Marie. Number nine, the empty seat. Lisa Marie spent many of her days at Graceland as it was her home and heart of Elvis Presley. And she loved the mansion so much because it immortalized the rock and roll legend. Lisa made no secret of her love of the special property that she was reared in and still called home. The late star was lent on the mountain of memories from her childhood to keep the Presley family traditions alive. And that's why she still visited the luxury property regularly to do things Elvis and her used to do. After being open to the public in 1982 and becoming the second most visited private visited private house in America, it became hard for so many to believe that the inner workings of the house still functioned, but Lisa Marie ran a tight ship after inheriting her father's estate. While the kitchen appliances were said to still work, they would be turned off for fire safety and when Lisa Marie and her family were there, there, the staff would fire them up so the family could have dinner in the mansion. When the tours wrapped up, Lisa Marie and her loved ones could clamor around the huge dining table for family dinners and they would occasionally leave an empty seat on the end in honor of Elvis. It was almost like she hoped her dad would walk in through the doors and take a seat at the table. But Lisa Marie's favorite excuse to get together was the Thanksgiving holiday so she could be with her nearest and dearest father. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number eight, we have the upstairs room. For millions of fans who flock each year to Elvis's Presley's Graceland Estate, the home has become a place where they can truly get close to the king of rock and roll. However, Graceland was also a private home 
for Lisa Marie and her extended family. This is why the upstairs rooms remained off limits to tours of the house which began in 1983. Lisa Marie will also admit that the upstairs rooms has this creepy shrine to a bygone era when her father was still alive. While all the rooms remain the same as Elvis had left them, Lisa would show off the upstairs rooms including Graceland's secret room that holds a treasure trove of items. And the location of this exact room still remains a secret to the public. Behind the door that's marked employees only lies a room that no Graceland guest can visit. While the room is so secret, when Oprah's camera crew was allowed to tour the estate, they would have to turn off the camera until they were inside so no one would know the exact location. Inside the room lies treasures that have never been seen by the public. The room was made to be earthquake proof, fire proof, and tornado proof. Items in the room include checks signed by the king of rock and roll, and majority of Elvis's costumes and cabinets that housed over 60,000 photographs. Number 7. Struggles Nearly 5 months after her passing, Lisa Marie Presley shared an essay she wrote about navigating grief following the heartbreaking passing of her son, Benjamin. Sources close to the star would exclusively tell the US Sun that the musician was leading a reclusive life and was struggling in the wake of her son's passing. Lisa struggled to find respite from the pain of losing Benjamin and she found it really difficult to cope with and this is why she barely left the house for months after his passing. While Lisa Marie looked for various ways to help her manage her feelings of grief and loss, she even started to go in and out of the Church of Scientology for many years as she was trying to find herself a new purpose. And in spite of this, those close to her had concerns and one insider even confessed that Lisa had been struggling so much over the years and living in her dad's shadow. Many who knew her feared that she would pass away at a young age. Lisa is said to have had a lot on her plate in the years and months ahead of her passing and she was struggling personally with her family relationships and handling her exes. Number 6. Isolation Due to Lisa Marie's personal struggles, she spent her final days on trying trek between Los Angeles and Graceland. Source close to the family echoed that by saying Presley who lived most of her life in the limelight had been living a reclusive life and had especially struggled since her 27 year old son Benjamin passed away in 2020. In Lisa Marie's final years she was racked with grief over Ben as he was her baby and he relied on her so heavily. So after she found out that he had passed away her whole world completely fell apart and she found it really difficult to cope with so she spent most of her days in isolation. Despite her personal struggles, Lisa Marie always tried to keep in good spirits, at least when she did venture into the public. And her final speech at Graceland would prompt fans to erupt in applause. While Lisa would also address her grief in an essay for people, she would say, Grief does not stop or go away in any sense, a year or years after the loss. Grief is something you have to carry with you for the rest of your life, in spite of what certain people or culture wants us to believe. Lisa was struggling and never wanted to admit it, but her heart had been shattered since losing her son and the grief took a huge toll on her. Number 5 Priscilla Presley Lisa Marie had mended her relationship with her mom Priscilla Presley after her son's devastating passing despite years of prior estrangement. It said that Lisa Marie had a really rocky relationship with Priscilla due to her troubles and breakdown of her marriage to Michael Lockwood. But they became close again after Ben's passing and Priscilla supported her as much as she could. During Lisa Marie's divorce with Lockwood, Priscilla chose to stand by him which caused a lot of friction between the mother and daughter duo. During this time, Priscilla was only able to find comfort from her friends as the relationship between her and Lisa fell apart and she was at loss over what to do at the time. While well, Lisa filed for divorce in 2016 and claimed she found images of younger people on Michael's computer, during the divorce after losing her husband and mother, Lisa would turn to substances to numb the pain. While Michael denied the allegations, it would lead to a messy court and custody battle and while Lisa needed her mom the most, she knew knew that her mom was on her ex-husband's side and that she couldn't turn to her for help. With only Lisa knowing what was truly on that computer, she never really detailed the things she actually found on that computer to the public. Number 4 The Alarming Red Carpet Appearance Extra host Billy Bush did the final Golden Globes red carpet review of Lisa Marie Presley and immediately
immediately realized that something was amiss. Just two days before her passing, Lisa Marie would walk the red carpet at the Golden Globes. She attended to support the Elvis biopic of her father. Since Bush has recalled his brief red carpet talk with an ashen and unsteady Lisa Marie by saying she was very uneven in her balance. The speech was very slow and definitely when the interview was over, I turned to my producer next to me and said something's off here. She was certainly with it, just a second slow, but she was there. She was definitely there just to tad off in some way. For the interview, Stars had to navigate two steps to the platform where he stood, but Presley was struggling to do so, so Bush went down and met the star on the red carpet itself. Also, there's been videos at the event that show her walking unsteadily and being escorted by her manager who grabbed her arm to give her support. It's clear that something was going on with the star and she didn't want to talk about it. Number three, the safe place. Much has been said about the secrets that lie within Elvis Presley's Graceland bedroom. The private sanctuary has remained off limits to the public since his passing. However, during an interview in 2013, Lisa Marie spilled secrets about the room and she would say Elvis Presley's bedroom was one of the places she would feel the safest. It said that Lisa would always keep a key for the upstairs with her and go up there and up there was just Elvis in her bedroom. While the rooms are said to be a sanctuary, she always felt like she could shut the door and feel the safest and calmest. This is why she kept the area the same as Elvis has left it. The area still having a lot of Elvis Elvis's flair for the flamboyant and reflected the decorating taste of the 1970s. The king of rock and roll only child admitted, oh, it's showy. It's got a long shag carpet, a black bed, and red walls, gold, everything here and there. Number two, the friendship with the Duchess of York. Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, penned a touching tribute to Lisa Marie Presley after the singer passed away on Thursday, revealing their surprising friendship. Sarah would say, I say hello to you every day and I love you, my sissy, and I will continue to say hello to you every day. You are my sissy, an amazing mother to Ben, Riley, Harper, and Finley, and a superbly loving daughter to Priscilla. You have been my devoted friend for many years and I am here for your family to support and love them. I am deeply saddened, my sissy. You are in my heart. A close friend to Prince Andrew's ex-wife told page six that the two women originally met when Lisa was living in Sussex, England with her ex-husband, Michael Lockwood, back in 2010. Apparently, they hit it off straight away and that they just seemed to understand each other. Over the years, the pair became quite close and kept in touch when Lisa moved back to the States. Lisa was always really supportive of the Duchess and when she was going through tough times and Lisa even offered her refuge in Hawaii to weather out the storm. The Duchess was never able to forget that and Lisa even went out of her way to support her friend and that the two actually really bonded as sisters. And coming in number one today, we have The Secret Job. Although Lisa was a singer and songwriter that spent most of her life in her home country of America, the daughter of Elvis also called Sussex home for a while. While she also laughed herself a very different type of job when compared to her usual career as she was actually working in a fish and chip van in the village despite owning a 15th century grade 2 listed country mansion it appears that Lisa wanted to get stuck in with the village life and thought the best way she could do that was to serve the locals. The van was apparently owned by local pub owners Kim and Justin Scales and it was a job that Lisa reportedly loved doing. Back in 2012, Kim would say that the singer could not wait to don an apron and serve people and she found it really amusing when people did not know it was her. Although being the daughter of one of the most iconic singers in the world, Lisa wanted to be fully integrated in the life in Sussex Village and she really enjoyed her shifts. At number 10 we have her mother had custody of her kids. Back in 2017, Priscilla Presley would confirm that she was caring for Lisa Marie's young children as her kid's father faced explosive allegations after Lisa Marie accused him of sexual misconduct. At the time, Lisa had been going through a very difficult divorce battle and in the divorce papers filed, Lisa would claim that her twin's dad, Michael Lockwood, was at the subject of a criminal investigation surrounding the fact that she had found inappropriate videos and photographs of younger people on his computer. And while many people were quick to assume that Lisa's children were in foster care, Priscilla would clear up the rumors when she headed to her Facebook to say, there's lots of confusion, commotion, and concern from all the talk circulating. Let me put this to rest. 
The girls have not been in foster care and never will be. The girls have been with me and they will be until this is all sorted out. While it's unclear why the children were not in the custody of Lisa Marie or Michael Lockwood, authorities would also choose not to open up about the official case involving Michael that had Lisa Marie feeling shocked and horrified after she discovered the photos and videos on his computer. Number 9. Bankrupt By 2004, Lisa Marie Presley would sell off 85% of her interest in the Elvis estate for around $100 million and it would be the biggest mistake of her life. According to court documents, Lisa Marie declared that she had an income that was around $109,000 a month and her monthly expenses were around $92,000 which left a narrow margin, especially considering that since the fall of 2019, she had to pay just three quarters of a million dollars in attorney fees. At the time of the court filing, Lisa Marie had over $3.3 million in major outstanding debt. The biggest debt by far was a line of credit from Barclays Bank UK for more than a million dollars. The rest of the stated debt was dominated by unpaid state federal taxes for years 2017, 2018, and 2021. There were also a few similar things like a Maserati monthly car payment of $1,708. Some of the tax debt was being paid off on a monthly basis, and there was also $280,000 owed to a ghostwriter that was being used for her upcoming tell all memoir. Priscilla has also stated at one point in Lisa's life, she was in debt for $16 million following a disastrous business deal made by her business manager, Barry Siegel. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number eight, scared. Just just days before her passing, Lisa Marie Presley would say that she blamed herself every single day for the passing of her son Benjamin. In an essay written by Lisa, she would write about how painful it was to be judged when a loved one passes in a premature, unnatural, or tragic way, especially if that loved one is your child. The essay was originally published in People in August 2022, and she would say, I already battle with and beat myself up tirelessly and chronically, blaming myself every single day, and that's hard enough to now live with, but others will judge and blame you too, even secretly or behind your back, which is even more cruel and painful. On top of everything else, later the singer would describe her son as the sweetest and most incredible being that she has ever had the privilege of knowing, and that she said that he reminds her so much of her father Elvis on so many levels and that it actually scared her. Number 7. Axl Rose Recently, Axl Rose has revealed that he has a secret friendship with Lisa Marie Presley as he opened up a about her tragic passing. In an interview with People, the Guns N' Roses singer described her passing as unreal and recalled sending her animal videos to lift her spirits following Benjamin's passing. Axel would also go on to say, I miss my friend Lisa. Her passing, just as her son's or as a kid, her father doesn't seem real. Lisa loved her family, all her children. My heart goes out to them. When Axel went on to describe his efforts and support of Lisa following Ben's passing, Axel would recall awkwardly broke the issue of his passing in order to show her that he cared and he wanted her to know that he cared and wanted to comfort her. For years it's been said that Axel and Lisa had a really tight friendship and that they were known to swap jokes, news articles, and lots of animal videos as a way of raising Lisa's spirits. After the passing of her son, all he wanted was her to be happy at least as much as one could be under the circumstances. Axel and Lisa became friends when Axel would hang out with Elvis backstage and Lisa would come to the shows and Axel would also know it was also great to see her as she was always fun and supportive. Number 6. Michael Jackson Just three weeks after her first divorce was finalized in 1994, Lisa would find herself getting married to pop icon Michael Jackson following his proposal over the phone. The pair soon then went to the Dominican Republic where she filed for a quick divorce from her husband and then wed Michael in private. She would then later publicly announce her wedding by saying, My married name is Miss Lisa Marie Presley Jackson. My marriage to Michael Jackson took place in a private ceremony outside of the United States weeks ago. But their marriage was rocked by the emerging allegations of accusations of abuse held against Jackson that surrounded younger people. The singer then reportedly became so dependent on Lisa Marie for emotional support while she became concerned about his use of sedative substances. Lisa Marie later said in 
an interview with Rolling Stone that she had hoped to have saved the trouble singer, with the marriage being dogged by theories that the pair had an asexual relationship, leading to Lisa Murray appearing in a suggestive video for his hit in 1995, You Are Not Alone. The pair would then later get a divorce in 1996, and Lisa Marie is said to have never stopped loving him. Number five, substance abuse. In Lisa Marie Presley's book, I'm Grateful to Be Alive, she opened up about her substance addiction. In the book, she would state it was a difficult path to overcome her dependence to substances and put her life back on track. She would also say in recent years that she has seen too many people she loves struggle with addiction and pass away tragically from this epidemic. She would also go on to know that it was time for all of us to say goodbye to the shame surrounding addiction and that we had to stop blaming and judging ourselves and the people around us. In the book, Lisa would specifically mention her children as the purpose to stay sober when she wrote, As I write this, I think of my four children who gave me purpose to heal. And later she would state she was so grateful to be alive and that she had four beautiful children who had given her a sense of purpose and that gave her the strength to carry her through her darkest times. Number four, finding joy. Lisa Marie was a singer just like her father and during her time she graced us with three beautiful albums. She also looked to her children for joy and told Healthy Living in 2014 that she was ferociously protective over her children by saying, I smother them in love. They are my priority. That's what I do. That's what I care about. I keep them close to me and make sure they are happy and healthy. And while Lisa Marie's children truly felt inspired by their mom because she was a very strong, smart woman who raised them to do things on their own and not care what people thought, behind her tough shell, the star was breaking and searching for something to help her feel whole again. What Lisa wanted to feel the most was joy and she spent her whole life trying to shed away from the dark and into the light where she could finally feel happy again, like she did when she was a child before she lost her father. Number three, Scientology. While people have recently been researching details about her personal life, one of the most recent questions people have had is how Lisa Marie got involved with the Church of Scientology and her involvement wouldn't be the proudest moment of her life. Lisa Marie was reported to have joined the Church of Scientology shortly after her father's passing in 1977. According to OK Magazine, she was brought to the church by her mother, who found it hard to handle Lisa after she got involved in substances in her youth. Lisa's involvement with the church thus began and lasted for several decades. While earlier in her involvement, she would claim that Scientology saved her life, later on in the cult-like religion, she would take a clean break as she claimed it had taken advantage of her and wanted everything she had when she mentioned I slowly started to self-destruct. They were taking my soul, my money, my everything. Unlike other former Scientologists, she did not reveal too much about the reason that led her to her decision to leave the church. However, there have been some reports regarding her involvement and she isn't so proud of them. Number two, dark kid. At the age of nine, Lisa Marie would lose her father and she would continue to endure a string of passing soon after. When in a two year period, the Lights Out singer also lost her grandfather as well as her great grandfather and ants. In 2003, she would tell Newsweek magazine, I didn't have much of a runway in life. I was like a deep, dark kid who was always melancholy. Lisa Marie also struggled during her teen years when she started to rebel against her mother, Priscilla Presley. While the star claims that she was in a destruction mode, she would then admit in an interview with Playboy that same year that she did anything her mom didn't want her to do from smoking, drinking, substances, boys, whatever she could get her hands on. And that she went through a substance phase for like three years and it would cause her to be thrown out of her house by her mom and she would be forced to stay at the Scientology Center. And coming at number one today, we have the grueling legal battle. Like any mother, no one wants their children to know the grueling details about the failed relationship she has with their father. With Lisa Marie and Michael Lockwood being officially divorced since May of 2021, they had a grueling legal battle. And a lot of her problems she had with Michael, she would keep a secret for her children say the former couple made the decision to part ways in 2016 following 10 years of marriage, but they have been in and out of court for years arguing over everything from custody of their teenage twin daughters to money matters. Five months after the pair finalized their divorce, Lockwood would take Elvis Presley's daughter to court yet again in October of 2021, petitioning for higher child support payments, claiming that he had no steady income at the time. The mother of four fought back saying she couldn't afford it because she was in debt. But Michael alleged that she was still pulling over $200,000 from her rock legend dad's estate and the judge would rule that Lisa Marie would have to cop up 
$2,600 per month. In March of 2022, Michael would then demand her financial records be made public after his estranged ex refused to share details of her book contract following reports that she was promised at least $3 million to write a memoir on her father as well as her relationship with Michael Jackson. That same month, the musician would also question to know how much money the mother of his children would be pulling from the Elvis biopic. It's clear that Michael was really interested on leeching Lisa Marie's money and would become really aggressive to get more money and it's clear that he felt he should know all about her income so he could dictate how much of it she should be giving him and this was a secret she kept so she wouldn't hurt her children because she didn't want them to know that their father was a gold digger. Coming in at number 10 today, we have the secret grandchild. On Sunday at Lisa Marie's funeral service, Riley Keough's husband, Ben Smith Peterson, would reveal that the couple had welcomed a secret child last year. The stuntman announced the news while he was reading a letter on behalf of his wife at the memorial service. In the letter, Ben would say, I hope I can love my daughter the way you love me, the way you love my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for giving me strength, my heart, my empathy, my courage, my sense of humor, my manners, my temper, my wildness, and my tendency. I'm the product of your heart. My sisters are the product of your heart. My brother is the product of your heart. Since the memorial service, a representative has confirmed the birth of Riley and Ben's daughter, and the couple's daughter is the first grandchild of Lisa Marie and the first great grandchild of Elvis and Priscilla. While everyone was shocked to learn that the Presley family kept a child a secret, Riley's tribute to her mother would bring the whole room to tears as they remember Lisa for her strength and love. Number nine, we have the childhood message. Before Elvis Presley passed away in an interview, the king would describe with glee how much of a terror Lisa Marie was. But what many didn't know is that she left behind a hidden graffiti message in a secret drawer. During a live virtual tour with Graceland archivist Angie Marchese, she would point out a secret drawer that was located in the corridor next to the kitchen on the way into the jungle room from the front door. In fact, it's right where fans walk during the regular in-person tour of Graceland. During the interview, Angie would open the drawer, and when it was open, you could see written inside was Lisa Marie's graffiti, which read, Lisa's home, Graceland, with a smiley face. Also inside the drawer was a 1993 phone book, which seems quite random, but Elvis historian revealed it was owned by the King's Aunt Delta May, who lived at Graceland until that very year. Interestingly, all kinds of items remained in the drawers at Graceland, just as they were left behind by those who were living in the mansion. For example, the plates and glasses are still kept in the kitchen cupboards and is the china in the drawers in the dining room. Additionally, in a drawer in the music room, quite randomly features a samurai sword that was gifted to Elvis by a Japanese officer. Lisa Marie very much saw Graceland as her family home, and the china she used was kept in the drawers in her Aunt Delta his bedroom, which is connected to the kitchen, and it isn't on the tour. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? So don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming number eight, we have her connection with John Travolta. John Travolta and Lisa Marie Presley had known each other for decades, but before Travolta and Presley were friends, Lisa Marie was nothing more than a fan of the rising celebrity. After the passing of Lisa's father, Elvis, Priscilla was looking to bring some joy into her daughter's life and used her Hollywood connections to arrange a meeting between the two. However, before rumors started to begin that Travolta and Presley dated, when the two met, Presley was only 11 and Travolta was in his mid-twenties. However, there was an apparent connection between Priscilla and Travolta and it is said their connection apparently led to three to four secret dates that didn't go any further. However, it was during this time Travolta would speak to Priscilla about the Church of Scientology as he has been a member since 1975 and extended an invitation to Priscilla to come and see what it was all about. Apparently, Priscilla found Found it to be very welcoming and she joined in 1977 and as a result Lisa Marie had no choice but to join the institution as well. Lisa Marie would then be placed into obedience therapy as a young child as she was in a bad mental condition after she lost her father and in her weak moment of great loss John persuaded her to come in. Number seven, trauma. Before Lisa Marie passed away she revealed that her last memory of discovering Elvis after he had passed away in the bathroom of his famous Memphis home on August 16th, 1977. Lisa would confess that she didn't like to talk about it. In her confession, she would say it was 4 a.m. 
I was supposed to be asleep, but actually he found me. Lisa Marie was in her room with her mother Priscilla when Elvis arrived with them a couple minutes later and kissed her goodnight. This would be the last time she would see her father alive. Later when she went to see her father, she would be attended by her friend Ginger and discovering her father had passed away, Lisa Marie would be terrified and she ran to the phone to call Elvis's ex-girlfriend Linda Thompson who was not at Graceland at the time. Lisa Marie would be left feeling traumatized as she was her daddy's prince us and she truly was loved by him. That was a huge trauma for her. Lisa empathetically acted out as a child and then she would begin to take substances so she could forget the agony of losing her father. Number 6. Overwhelming Priscilla After Lisa Marie started to act out to numb the pain of losing her father, she began to overwhelm her mother Priscilla in the process. Priscilla would get aspirated with her because she was a rebellious kid and Priscilla knew that she was not a kid who believed in rules and boundaries. Lisa Marie is Said to have been a free spirit as she would do what she wanted whenever she wanted and this drove Priscilla nuts because she didn't want to see what happened to Elvis happen to her daughter. Priscilla felt like she was locked in a game of Mortal Kombat with her daughter and the relationship was actually really hostile for the longest time. The two were just not aligned at all. There was no harmony, their relationship of welfare was described as living in a war zone that would lead to Lisa Marie to do substances to get away from her misery as she was feeling deep inside her. That's why it's being said that Priscilla is actually taking her daughter's passing really hard as she still wasn't able to fully repair her relationship with her daughter before she passed away. Number 5. Power imbalance Seems like Lisa Marie and her mother Priscilla Presley could never see eye to eye because there was too much of a power imbalance when it came to the two. It said that Priscilla had all the power. She was the mom after all and Lisa Marie couldn't run away after her father's passing as she was only 9 years old. So the only way she felt like she could stand her ground was to fight back, be rude and disrespectful to her mother. Lisa Marie felt like this was her only option to feel happiness was to be combative and the more Lisa Marie started to act out and misbehave, the more and more her mother got worried. Eventually by the age of 13 years old, Lisa would start experimenting with substances and the more Lisa started to fight back so she could be released by her mother's control, the more Priscilla would try her own methods of control. Eventually Priscilla would have no other choice but to join the Church of Scientology and she would kick Lisa Marie out and force her to attend courses that Lisa Marie did not want to attend. Number 4. Obedience Therapy Lisa was only 11 years old when her mother Priscilla joined a cult like religion which is known as Scientology. During her childhood years she would be dropped off alone at the Scientology Center for hours of obedience therapy and purification rundowns. This would reportedly consist of hot sauna sessions exercise and taking vitamins. Lisa Marie had no choice but to attend the sessions and it seemed anytime she would act up she would be dropped off. The instructions from Priscilla to the church were to handle her and do whatever they wanted so her daughter would get back into line. Lisa had no choice and she was forced into conversion therapy and obedience therapy sessions as the church saw these as courses that were fit to her needs. This is something that should never be forced onto an 11 year old and yet Lisa Marie was forced to believe that something was wrong with her and she had to attend these courses. Number 3. Michael Lockwood While Lisa Marie Presley was embroiled into a ferocious custody battle with her ex-husband, she would accuse him of having hundreds of illegal images of younger people on his computer. While many have stated that Lisa Marie falsely accused him of this crime, it really makes you wonder if these crimes were never true, then why would she divorce her ex-husband and why would the police always stay quiet about the issue as they never confirmed if he was guilty or not guilty? It just all seems a little fishy. In the court filing at the time of her divorce, Lisa Marie Presley Presley would never detail exactly what she found at the time, but she would say she was very shocked, horrified, and it made her sick to her stomach. However, in the papers, it would also be said that the Beverly Hills Police Department found 80 of Lockwood's devices during a raid on her home, and she added that the cops still had them and that they'd never been fully analyzed, and that she had no idea what else would be on those devices, but she was scared that there was more worse images and evidence on those unanalyzed devices. Number two, four divorces. Sometimes it's hard to find love and it's clear that Lisa Marie struggled with her whole life to truly find the one. In 2016, when news broke that Lisa Marie was ending her union with Michael Lockwood, unfortunately, this would be her fourth failed marriage. In 2007, Lisa Marie would explain her marital woes to Marie Claire when she said her first union with Danny Keough failed because she was really young and Danny had resented her because of who she was. She would then add that her marriage became a power struggle because it was hard for a man to be with a woman who is stronger and 
wealthy, and that's why she ditched Danny for Michael Jackson. However, she would then recall this being the biggest mistake of her life. As her rocky marriage to Nicolas Cage, she would state that marrying him was a wild flurry and a crazy idea that came with being young. As complicated as it all sounds, Presley eventually disunion from Michael Lockwood was arguably the toughest following their 10 years together. The exes were locked in horns and one of the most bitter, custody and spousal support fights Hollywood has ever seen. And coming in number one today, we have Cruel to Nannies. Shortly after Lisa Marie gave birth to her beautiful twin girls, she acquired the help of nanny Christine White. According to TMZ, they would detail that Christine sued Lisa Marie because she felt like she was being overworked without proper compensation. The suit claimed that Christine was tasked with caring for the babies around the clock and she even worked seven days a week and was not granted breaks. By the following year, Christine would drop her case against Lisa Marie, but not before Presley countersued. In the lawsuit, Presley claimed that White was fired after breaking her contract and that she allegedly took over 165 unauthorized photos and videos of her children, which broke her confidentiality agreement. The case was ultimately dismissed, and although it's unclear if it was ever settled, Presley seemed to have the last word on the matter, as she claimed Christine's original lawsuit was born out of utter greed and revenge because Lisa Marie fired her. Coming at number 10, we have makeup. During a November 2016 appearance on ITV's Loose Woman, Priscilla Presley would admit that Elvis would refuse to see her without makeup on or even if she looked a bit disheveled. During an interview, Priscilla would say, Some can't have the truth. I've always had a little bit of makeup. He never wanted to see me getting dressed. He wanted to see the end result. It wasn't until after the pair got divorced that Priscilla would notice that Elvis had been trying to transform her into the ideal woman. That's why he had strict rules on how her makeup should look and how she should dress when she was around him. Priscilla would even say later in an essay for People, something in his southern upbringing had taught him that the right girl was to be saved for marriage. I was that girl. She would then claim that Elvis would try to mold her into his perfect woman and she would wear clothes, hairstyle and makeup of his careful choosing and it took her years to finally understand who she was and to build a personality of her own. Number 9. Elvis's Mother It's no secret that Elvis had a deep rooted mommy issue problem which ultimately bled into his relationship with Priscilla. In her 1985 memoir, Elvis and Me, Priscilla picked up on Elvis's unshakable relationship with his mother, Gladys, who passed away in 1958. Priscilla would say, I was to learn Elvis's mother, Gladys, was the love of his life, according to Express biographer Alma Nash, pointed out that Elvis's mother passed away, coincided with him meeting Priscilla, which might have led to his obsession to turn her into Gladys. Elvis was looking for that young girl that he could mold into the very image of Gladys, and he had a knack for dressing up young women to resemble her. He would pick out their clothes, makeup, and show them how to style their hair and and this is why Priscilla was so perfect is because she would do everything he wanted her to do because she was scared that if she didn't do it, some other woman would and she wanted to be the one. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming to number 8, we have Scientology. Lisa Marie Presley was so traumatized by her father's passing after she discovered that he had passed away at the age of 9, she had to spend the next 35 years of her life trying to be cured by the Church of Scientology. According to claims by her former counsel, Karen de la Carrière, who was known as the Queen of Scientology as she was a high ranking member of the church for 35 years, she would say that Priscilla Presley turned to Scientology to alleviate the grief of Elvis's sudden passing in 1977. She used the church to help control her daughter's behavioral problems as well. While Elvis would never allow his daughter to join the church if he was still alive, after Priscilla joined the church after being recommended to join by John Travolta, she would then make Lisa Marie join as well and Priscilla would even go on to force her to attend behavioral classes so she could get her daughter to fall back into line. Lisa Marie was a second generation Scientologist who didn't want to go into Scientology in the first place but was dragged into it because her parents were in it. She also didn't want to attend the courses but she had to follow her mother's rules. Number 7. Obedience Classes After Lisa Marie Presley started to act out after her father passed away, Priscilla was seeking out new ways 
ways to help gain control of her daughter, Lisa Marie. One of these methods was to let the church of Scientology deal with her. By the age of 11 years old, Lisa would be dropped off at the Scientology Center for hours for obedience therapy and purification rundowns. This would reportedly consist of hot sauna sessions, exercise, and taking vitamins. Every day, Priscilla would be seen scowling when the big limousine would drive up to the celebrity center with a chauffeur and drop Lisa Marie off as she was ordered to get out of the car to get into the church and straighten herself out. Lisa Marie had no choice but to attend the sessions and every time she acted up, she would be dropped back off at the center. Priscilla would instruct the church to handle her and Lisa Marie would be stuck at the center for hours and forced into conversion therapy and obedience therapy. Number 6. Can't talk to Elvis's friends. While Elvis might have been a fan of sexy outfits and heavy makeup for Priscilla, he was so allegedly quite jealous and possessive of her. He made it clear from the beginning that the Memphis Mafia was to keep their distance from Priscilla. Elvis's former bodyguard Sonny West would even say he made it clear that Priscilla was not to enter any room with other males that were present until Elvis was already there. Elvis also went to great pains to shield Priscilla from the public and sometimes even his friends. Any violation of the mandate let her in for a third degree punishment. If she spent any time alone with any other man in Grace land, no matter how innocent it was, both she and him might be questioned about why they were in the same room together, what they talked about, and for how long. Elvis is said to have had a possessive attitude and it's surprising with his own colorful dating history. If you are with Elvis, it was only him, but he could be with whoever he wanted. Doesn't make sense. Number 5. The Secret Children Even though Elvis has been gone for many years, Elvis is still the center of several new scandals over the years and one of them, hitting headlines, seems to claim that the king of rock and roll supposedly kept a secret of seven of his children from the rest of the world. And over the years, the Presley family had to keep this is secret. While it's just been a speculation that Elvis does have other children, the National Enquirer would even state that they too believe Elvis may have seven other children out there, as the tabloid has claimed that they have conducted a two year investigation into missing members of the Presley family, and the National Enquirer has even went as far to say that they have witness testimonies, check receipts, personal correspondence, birth certificates, and DNA tests that prove that the children belong to Elvis and that they were kept away from Hollywood all this time. And the Presley family even kept this a secret from the world. And with the family being very quiet on the matter, it leaves you to wonder if the king actually does have any other children floating around out there. Number 4. School When Elvis and Priscilla first started their relationship, it would continue upon his return to the United States and Priscilla stayed in Germany with her parents. In 1960, Elvis would return to the United States and during this time, him and Priscilla would stay in touch and soon Elvis would plot a plan to have Priscilla come visit him at his Graceland home. During a school break, Priscilla joined Presley and his his family. However, after ensuring Priscilla's parents, she would remain in Memphis and he reportedly took her to LA and Elvis's friends would cover up for the king by sending the teen's parents postcards from Memphis to mislead them to cover his broken promise. After a 1962 Christmas visit, Presley would then urge to have Priscilla stay by his side and he would assure Priscilla's mother and her stepfather that she would attend a Catholic school in Memphis and obtain a high school diploma. He also promised her parents he would live with his father off his Graceland property However, after several nights of living with Elvis's father, she began spending more time at Graceland and she would eventually move in permanently without her parents suspecting any wrongdoing and they kept this a secret from her parents as they broke her parents' rules. Number 3. Don't approach Elvis for photos Anyone who had plans of dating Elvis had to follow three strict rules when it came to dating the king of rock and roll. The first rule that they would be given is that they were not allowed to ask to take pictures with the star and they weren't even allowed to go around his Graceland property. It's now not pictures of themselves either. Elvis made this a strict rule as his girlfriends were meant to be his girlfriends not fans. Elvis was a very private person and if you were going to be with him, you had to be with him. Even if you were a fan, you had to put this all aside, otherwise he wouldn't want to be with you and he would just cut off communication with you completely. And if you thought any of Elvis's rules for dating him would be negotiated, they couldn't. Even if you thought you could spin things around and negotiate the rules, this wouldn't be the case and Elvis would just 
end up ghosting you. Number two, the golden rules. Elvis Presley had an affair with his on-screen lover, Anne Margaret, that turned into a romantic relationship. But when things got real and Priscilla Presley found out about their relationship, he was forced to break his one golden rule before marrying her. Elvis's life changed when he signed on to appear in Viva Las Vegas. At the time, he starred in a massive amount of movies that showed him singing, dancing, and courting women for the delight of his millions of fans. But then he met and Margaret and started to spend almost every waking moment with her. However, when other people started to get involved in their relationship, it would start to crumble. When Anne Margaret was in the UK promoting Viva Las Vegas, when she was asked about her relationship with the King of Rock and Roll, somehow she was misquoted in saying that she was secretly engaged to Elvis. And this would lead to Elvis to break one of his most important rules, which is if you're caught in the act, never admit to it. This would be the time Elvis would come clean to Priscilla, who was furious, and he would then decide it was time to take their relationship to the next step. And he married Priscilla as he previously promised Priscilla's parents he was going to marry her one day. And being a man of his word, he did, and he ended up ghosting Anne Margaret for not following his other golden rule, which is to keep his name out of the press. Number one, stay with Elvis at all times. So recently, Elvis's ex girlfriend, Mindy Miller, exposed Elvis in an interview when she stated that he had three non-negotiable rules for his girlfriends that they had to follow and they were set out by his Memphis Mafia. One of the rules any woman in Elvis's life had to follow was that you had to be present with Elvis and watch him at all times. Mindy would go on to say, if he got up in the middle of the night and he didn't sleepwalk, he just wanted to watch TV or something to eat, whatever it was, you had to watch him. Two words. Watch him. She would also go on to say, I, unlike other girlfriends, didn't consider it a part of the job. It was delight for me. He was my boyfriend. I didn't look at him as Elvis Presley. I fell in love with the man I met. If Elvis wanted something to eat, Mindy would go downstairs to the kitchen with him and he would call one of the maids to bring something up. Either way, anything that was going on, whether Elvis was to leave or go to bed, Mindy or any of his other girlfriends would have to stick by his side and they would even have to study and read the Bible and spiritual books together.